Welcome back. All right, so news of the day for all you fine people for your Thursday, February 24th. Uh, so the Dallas Stars making some news this hour, uh, claiming student each on waivers from the New Jersey Devils. Uh, I'm not that surprised that student each doesn't clear. I like student each. Uh, clearly Dallas does as well. They've waived Tanner Caro. Caro, good bottom six forward who very likely clears waivers, uh, ends up going down to the Texas Stars. We shall see. But uh, I, I like the pickup. By Dallas uh, again be interesting to see how student each fits in uh, what kind of uh, where he where he fits into the lineup and what the plan is going forward but uh, I think that's a decent pickup uh, Seattle news not great news either uh, McCann is on the IR so this morning for the for the preview uh, I saw the Boston Seattle game tonight as maybe being a trap game that you know Boston coming off that big win over Colorado Seattle's lost five in a row. They've got to win one at some point. And I thought, you know, tonight's game, we could see that that storyline change. But with McCann on IR, things get a little more difficult. They have call up Cole Lind uh, for tonight. But uh, I, I think Seattle, it, it's definitely going to be a challenge depending on how long McCann's out, right? So on IR doesn't mean that it's long-term. That's why you have the long-term injured reserve. And so for Seattle... I guarantee you that fans and the team itself all hoping this will be as short as possible. Uh, Tony D'Angelo is expected to miss about a month. They're saying it's an upper body injury. Uh, Rod Brendamore saying it's the, the midsection. They're not giving a whole lot of details on this, but losing D'Angelo for a month will hurt Carolina. That being said, they have definitely got a lot of depth on the blue line. They should be able to absorb this loss and come through it all right. Uh, but it, it, it does, you know, it does make you wonder if they're going to make a move now uh, in order to, to get them through the next month. So we'll see if, if Carolina becomes active based on this. Uh, because a month from now, of course, trade deadline will have already passed. So he should be back a little bit after the trade deadline's done if it does end up being a month that he's out. Uh, the reason I'm wearing Cleveland, because uh, JF Berube is going to make his third straight start. Uh, he was down with the Cleveland Monsters. I don't think he expected to come up and play, but he's playing this, his third straight. Uh, Merzlikens is on IR, so this is a chance for Barubi to show that he's uh, capable of playing in the NHL. What's interesting with Barubi too, is that his numbers in, in Cleveland, an 891 save percentage, not setting the world on fire, comes up at the NHL level. So far, he's 2-0 with a 923 save percentage. But tonight's game is against Florida. Florida has made mincemeat out of the Columbus Blue Jackets twice this year. Every game's different. There's the possibility Columbus comes out tonight or and plays a very good game in Florida and, and comes out with the victory. But while that chance is there, I personally wouldn't wager that that's going to take place. Uh, but yeah, Barubi's been a decent story. And so I'm kind of rooting for him tonight. We shall see what happens at the very least. If Columbus were to lose this game, I would hope that Barubi ends up making some fantastic saves and is somehow still part of the story coming out of that game. Uh, also for tonight's game and not helping Columbus's case, Zach Wierenski is going to be out. So no Wierenski, no Merzlikens, and you're against a team that has scored 17 goals against you in the two meetings you've had this year. Columbus will be very glad not to have to play Florida again until next season. Because uh, Columbus is on a, a pretty good streak right now. And so a win over Florida would go a long way towards maybe getting them back into that playoff picture. Right? We'll see what happens. Uh, on the Toronto front, Muzzin has been moved to LTIR. They've maximized the amount of space that they've got under LTIR with him. With other moves they've made as well. So uh, it is a concussion. They're, they're basically going to make him take his time coming back. And again, this does affect how much cap space the Toronto Maple Leafs have right now. Uh, they've already called up Kyle Clifford this morning. You have to think that uh, other moves may be on the way. Losing Muzzin is a huge blow for the Toronto Blue Line. He is a top four defenseman, very good defenseman as well. And so they're going to miss him. Um, I'm sure that they're glad Labushkin's there now, uh, considering the loss of, of Muzzin. But you're going to need something else on the Blue Line. So we shall see if they put in any phone calls regarding other defensemen that might be available from around the National Hockey League. Uh, good news out of Montreal. Yep, and I'm not even being sarcastic at this point. Uh, Cole Caulfield over his last seven games has six goals and four assists for 10 points. Where he sits in the overall scoring race amongst rookies, he's now up to 14th. 
37 games, 7 goals, 11 assists, 18 points overall. Considering 10 of those points are in the last 7, that would tell you he had 8 points in 30 games before this run. Uh, he has more than doubled what he had in those 30 games in the past 7. It's been incredible to watch him get back to where he was in last year's playoffs. Last year's playoffs, Caulfield was fantastic, and he has started to become that Cole Caulfield again um, with Marty San Luis behind the bench. Is it sustainable? We'll know by the end of the year how sustainable this might be, but it's it's good news for Montreal, a team that their year is basically done, but the individual players on the team aren't done, so it is nice to see uh, Caulfield's story sort of you know turning itself around. And now Montreal's going to have a very good draft pick this year, We'll see uh, just how good that draft pick is. It's a pretty strong draft this year. And so with a really strong draft and everything, there's a good chance Montreal picks somebody in this summer's draft who comes up and plays for them next year. Of course, tonight's a big night for Nashville. Pekka Rene's number will be taken to the rafters. Uh, so that number will be retired tonight. Not that long after he retired, but it is it is a no-brainer that you retire Pekka Rene's number. Because, A, you know, he is one of the legends uh, of the last, what, 15 years when you look at goaltending. B, um, it, it is it is a good legacy he leaves in Nashville. Uh, the 2017 run being one that's really for the ages for Nashville. And also, who would wear Rene's number again after he wore it? So it's one of those numbers that retiring it, uh, it, it makes some sense. It's like when the league retired uh, Gretzky's number league-wide. I don't think they needed to. I don't think anybody was ever going to strap on a jersey that had 99 on the back again. Uh, we've seen every now and then somebody will wear a jersey that has 66 on the back and people, 66, that's Lemieux's number. And it doesn't matter which team you're wearing it on. So yeah, Rene's number in Nashville, it, it makes a lot of sense to retire it. Uh, tonight as well, Washington gets back TJ Oshie and Justin Schultz. So it looks like they're going to be back tonight, according to practices. They're they're on uh, Oshie's on one of the forward lines. Schultz on one of the defensive pairings. Looks like they're back in the lineup uh, for tonight's game against the Rangers. Uh, as that feud re recommences, uh, that should be a very entertaining game. And having Oshie back, of course, Capitals uh, will be happy about that. And Schultz has been very useful for them as well. And speaking of returns, the Philadelphia Flyers don't have very many good stories this year, but Joel Farabee. Still very young. There's a lot of upside there. And he is one of these positive aspects of their team. And he is seen to return this Saturday. The odd part is that Broussard, there's been talk about when he'll be ready and what's good. And Broussard might be close. But Broussard's still seen as probably not ready to come back on Saturday. And it feels like with Derek Broussard, there's been this maybe he'll come back for weeks now. So. Uh, Farabee returns, which is good news for the Philadelphia Flyers. Uh, I, I think that we're probably a couple of weeks out from hearing that they've they've either asked um, Giroux about waving or asked him to wave, and there's a difference there. Of, of You know, one being, would you like to go to another team? Would you like a chance at a Stanley Cup? Or going to Giroux and saying, we would like to trade you, so we need you to waive your no-movement clause. Uh, these are the teams that are interested. Where might you want to go? So there's a different way of looking at it. Uh, we'll see what Philadelphia does. Uh, I think it would be sad if Giroux gets moved before he's played a thousand games as a flyer, but these things do happen. Uh, we've seen players get traded just before hitting a thousand points uh, with one team, sometimes right before a thousand games. It just it happens that way. But uh, yeah, so let me know your thoughts in the comment section below regarding any of these items of the day. Uh, and hey, I'm, I'm again... Uh, I'm, I'm going to be excited to see what Stu Nietzsche might do in Dallas. He's one of those guys that I think the work ethic's pretty good, and maybe that change of scenery from New Jersey will, will do him some good. We shall see. Let me know your thoughts. Hit like and subscribe if you're browsing your way through. You just happened upon this video. Thank you guys so much for watching, for all your support. I will talk to you again soon.